Hey class of 2024, this is Mr. Baker here. Uh, this is the next video in our incoming ninth grade boot camp series. So if this is the first video you're watching, we recommend you go back to the welcome that we posted earlier. So today we're going to focus on one of the three areas that school counselors focus on with you is academic planning. So we're going to talk a little bit about that today. But before I, I get into it and before the other counselors get into it, it's important that we we stress that this information is good to have, but we don't expect you today to commit it to memory and we're not asking you or expecting you to know what you want to do for all four years of high school and life after high school today. Um, but we do want you to be forward thinking a little bit to know what's expected of you for graduation, what you want to do um, with your life after high school a little bit so you can start planning your courses now and in your future years to best set you up for that. Um, but no matter what the overall uh, message to take out of this is, we're here for you, we're here for you, we're here for you now, we're here for you in future years, and we'll always be here to remind you of this information. But we do want to give you a snapshot of what to expect this year and the next few years as you move through the high school and beyond. So the first thing I'm going to cover today is what is required of you to graduate. So instead of just reading all of this to you, I recommend that you pause on this slide and sort of start to read over and digest what you have to do to graduate and uh, what you might want to do to prepare yourself for what you want to pursue after high school. So what you'll see on these three uh, on these three columns on the left is graduation requirements. This is what you absolutely need to do to earn a diploma from Oyster River High School. In the middle, you will see what's required of you if you are pursuing a four year college after high school. And on the right, um, what we will talk about in a few slides is something called the New Hampshire Scholars Program, which is an initiative to um, identify you as having having taken a college prep level of coursework in high school to be uh, as another layer of being college ready. So you will see on on this slide we refer to everything as credits and the way credits work at the high school is a half year course is worth a half credit. A full year course is worth a full credit. So if, you, if it's easier for you, you could pretty much replace the word credit with year and um, come to the same conclusion. What you will notice, however, is some things that we do not require to graduate are required if you are hoping to attend a four year college after high school. So again, while we're not we're not here today asking you to make plans for life after high school, we do need you to consider certain classes that we don't require at the high school that colleges will want to see on your transcript before you leave us. Uh, the most notable of that would be world language. You will see in the middle column, the last line, world language. We do not require world language to get the diploma. However, colleges like to see two to three years of the same world language uh, for, uh, for admissions. There are definitely schools out there that, that don't require that or maybe may even require more than that. And as our as your counselor, we will work with you on making the right decisions, but we do want you to be thinking about what you have to take, what you want to take tentatively for what you might want to do after high school. But again, no real commitment today to make those final decisions, but we do want you to be thinking a little bit about um, your future. Uh, Mr. Baker, I have a quick question for you about world language. Sure. What about yes. if I took in middle school, if I took um, world language in the middle school, will that transfer to the high school? The credits transfer from Oyster River Middle School, a, a credit will transfer. So even if you're going into Spanish three uh, as a ninth grader, you have a credit of the Spanish work that you have at the middle school um, from the middle school. Uh, they don't transfer if you've moved if you've moved from the district, uh, if it's not on your transcript from a previous high school or um, uh, something like that, it, it may not transfer, but we do want you in the same level uh, we want you to take the next course in that sequence to, to move on so if you came from a high school where you do have a spanish um, exposure in spanish and you should go to spanish too we still want you to do that but you may need to get two or three credits of the same language here at the high school 
Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, um, so that was a lot of information. I always feel um, when you look at those requirement lists, it can kind of be overwhelming, but I assure you as you work through, um, it just happens and we have it planned out. Um, those requirements are pretty much planned out for you and we work with you to do that. But in terms of what you can be doing um, for yourselves over these next four years to kind of do that forward thinking and be proactive, um, some of the tools that you will have access to, um, one being our program of studies, and we are now fully online um, with the program of studies. You will find that link on our website. And that is a wealth of information that I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with um, as you progress through the high school. Um, here you're going to find all of our courses that we offer and each year any new courses that we're um, rolling out will be listed in the program of study so you'll um, can read a brief description about those courses. Um, the kind of the requirements are listed too so you know what you have to take. Um, so for example as a sophomore you're going to be taking a full year of US history. We have a variety of choices to earn that credit, so you want to familiarize yourself with those choices before you make your choice um, and what US history elective you would want to take to earn that credit. Uh, so you just want to keep that in mind, and so the more you inform yourself of those classes, the better choices that you're going to be making when course selection comes around. In the program, program of study, you'll also see a variety of career pathways, and so some of you might be coming in and you have some career goals and you see see yourself heading in a particular direction and you're passionate about that. So you might want to take a look at that and see what courses we offer here at the high school that will help support that plan. Others might say, oh, I don't know anything about what I want to do yet. I'm just trying to get myself into high school. That is A-OK -okay as well, um, but what we're going to be working with you on is encourage you to do a lot of exploring and kind of test the waters, if you will, and see what classes you really click with. Um, and if there's certain classes here that you actually prefer taking over others, let's take a look and see what career pathway that might put you on. Um, and so what careers potentially might help you utilize those skills that you enjoy using when you're in these classes. Um, and the important thing to really keep um, in mind as you're reading through the program of study is to keep an eye on the prerequisites. And what that means is that there are certain courses that um, students look forward to taking while they're here at the high school. However, you have to take certain co coursework before that in order for you to access cl those classes. And so if you do see any prereq pre notes, you want to kind of make note to yourself to make sure that you take the courses that are required to allow yourself time to get into that course by the time you graduate. And so that's going to lead us to four year planning. And so that's where four year planning is going to be super important because um, we do in, elect in an elective based system here at the high school. There are a variety of choices to be made um, and sometimes it takes time to get into your top choices um, based on how you're placed and any upper class students that might be aiming for those seats as well. And so when you're doing your four year planning um, that can help ensure that if you don't get your top pick as a sophomore or a junior, your backup choices are still classes that you have that are part of your four year plan and that you pl had intended to take at some point. It just might the order might get a little mixed up, but as long as you have access to those classes, that's the overall goal. And so some some of the um, tools that you will have access to for your for your planning include our new um, career planning and college um, pathways um, score program that is replacing Naviance. And pre some of you might be familiar with Naviance if you've had access to it at the middle school, um, but if not, that it doesn't. Don't worry because it's going away. Um, but in that program, we did have a four-year planner, so students used to complete their four-year plan online um, with Score. That um, feature is not in there, so we are currently working on um, how we are going to implement that four-year plan. So definitely stay on your toes for more information about that. Um, so again, but score is still going to help you. There's a lot of information about career pathways and kind of what skills you need to work on and what um, either trade programs, two year programs, four year programs after high school will get you ready to head into that career. We also have um, connections with Dover, Summersworth, Rochester Career Tech Centers. And so as you progress through high school, um, you know, some so some courses start sophomore year. Many of the programs are junior senior year, but you're going to learn more about those options to see if that is going to be a really good fit for you. In the springtime, 
We offer electives fairs. As I said, um, we are an elective based high school, so there are a lot of choices. And when you look in that program of study, you're go going to see that. And a brief summary doesn't always give you the best feel for what a class is about. And so the electives fair really helps to kind of emphasize and show you um, sample work projects. You're able to talk to the teachers. You're able to just see what that class really entails to help you make an informed decision. Um, and then in the spring, we also will go over course selection with your class. And so we meet with each class, um, the counselors, and we go over the course selection process. Um, some of you might be familiar with that um, if we went to your middle school to do this presentation or if you came here for a night presentation to learn more about that. Um, and so we will certainly give you guidance along the way to uh, make informed course selections each spring. Um, and then we meet with you individually. Um, and so before kind of your course selection is finalized, we have parents and students work on that first to input your choices. Then we will meet with you individually after that to kind of ensure again that you're hitting all your requirements that you need to, that you're kind of embedded, that your the selections you're making are either exploratory um, based on interest or heading towards a career path. And then these conversations really help us um, learn more about you and where you're headed. So when we kind of fine tune that schedule, we're meeting your interests and needs. Um, and overall, again, just um, that final piece that we want to remind students of on how to get to graduation and accomplish all that we're explaining to you today is creating and maintaining good habits. Um, and so especially heading into this year where um, students have, most students are starting off virtually and and being at home remote, these ha maintaining good habits are going to be even more important right now. And we're going to work a lot with you to help develop those skills. And so time management is really important. Identifying study skills that you have used over the years that work for you. Identifying maybe some skills that you don't utilize that could better work for you. Um, you know, encouraging that good night's sleep so you're rested, you're ready to go each morning when our school day starts. Um, attendance, being present and live in your video um, classes um, and engaging with your teachers and classmates. Um, although virtually it could be a little different, but we want to help you with that. Know that these videos for us, not super comfortable, but we're getting better at it each day. <laughs> um, and then again, utilizing support. So just because we are virtual this at, at the start of this year, maybe for the whole year, who knows, um, there are supports available and we want to make sure that you know how to access those and you are feeling confident in the work that you're producing and the skills that you're building while you're here with us. Oh, Ms. Mackinoff, I believe you're muted. Yeah, sorry. So thank you. Um, so we have a couple um, NHS programs at the high school, and it, it always seems to be a little bit confusing for our incoming ninth graders, rightfully so. Um, there's the New Hampshire Scholars Initiative, which Mr. Baker mentioned earlier, um, and we also have National Honor Society. So we like to highlight some of the differences between the two of them. Um, and also talk a little bit about some of the requirements so that ninth graders are ready to start that um, as they enter the high school. Um, New Hampshire Scholars, as Mr. Baker mentioned, is a program where you take certain academic courses and you can be recognized. Um, you don't have to apply for New Hampshire Scholars. You simply take the courses and perform successfully in them. Um, there are some designations, which would be STEM, which would be the um, science and mathematics area, art, is another emphasis and then STEAM combines both math science or all math science and art. Um, they do have minimum GPA requirements which are 3.4. Um, again there is no application for this and your counselor will certainly help kind of keep track of these requirements if you're interested in having that recognition at graduation. The other NHS that we have is the National Honor Society, and this is a little bit of a different program. It's a service based organization that incorporates an academic component to it. Um, there is a minimum GPA to be a member of the society. It's 3.4 GPA. There is an application process, so when a student reaches the midpoint of sophomore year, they can be invited if they meet the criteria. Um, and then they apply and, and can be accepted into the program. And to be eligible to have the application 
invite. Students need to have that minimum GPA requirement. They also need to have completed 40 hours of service. Um, and that's something that students can start now. So as you're entering ninth grade, you can begin to build those hours of service. It's important to note that you really need to keep track of those hours because you'll have to submit the information when you do your application. Um, so you want to keep a log of some sort to make sure you have um, the type of service and the person who you're working with so that you can submit that later. Um, the other component is demonstrated leadership. So students have to identify how they've contributed contributed in a leadership role um, through their service. So that again is an application requirement. New Hampshire Scholars is automatic and we will help you track that. Can I just note something that sometimes students are really worried about with the leadership piece? Because as a sophomore, sometimes you haven't had the opportunity to be the president of a club or anything because just sometimes the, you haven't had that opportunity. So it's not necessarily in that traditional sense. It could be just a leader in the classroom. So your teacher might be able to reference you as showing that leadership quality. It doesn't necessarily have to be in a designated role. Thank you. Uh, which uh, leads us to some additional information. Um, certainly there was a lot to think about. Um, and again, like other counselors have stated that we do not ask that you remember this all. You can always come back. The nice thing about these videos is you can go back to them at a later date and re get a refresher, but also we are here and we can always um, answer questions as they as they come up. So for some students, and this is definitely a much more a smaller group of students might be considering playing athletics um, in college. And so if you have that as a possibility, there are some additional um, things that you, sh you should be considering. For division one or two, which are much larger schools and much more competitive athletically, there are core courses that you need to fulfill. And so when you look, and you can know this information by looking at our program of studies. When you look at that program of studies, all the courses that meet that are NCAA approved have a little tiny NCAA circle next to them. So most of your core classes are NCAA approved, but there definitely are some that are not. And so Again, you might you might have no idea whether you'll play D1 or D2, but if it's if it's on your radar, I would really recommend that you take make sure that you're taking those courses because we want to make sure that when you graduate, you have as many doors open as possible, whatever they might be. And we wouldn't want you to inadvertently close one door, be, you know, in your first couple of years of high school just because you don't know. So there's plenty of choices. And like I said, most of our classes are so you can easily get into all your core courses and all your graduation requirements while meeting that if you so desire. But again, that's only for D1 and D2. For D3, you don't have those requirements. So something to consider. Um, I know that uh, both Mr. Baker and Ms. Uh, Ms. Cap oh, actually all, all the counselors talked about was your prerequisites. And so there's multiple layers for that. Certainly the, the responsibility is on you to make sure that you're meeting those prerequisites. And so sometimes it's important for you to do some of that backwards planning. And so, for example, sometimes students have a, a specific goal of, oh, I want to take, you know, AP bio or some sort of advanced course that they want to take. Some of those courses have prerequisites, so you want to make sure that you're doing some backwards planning so that you can make sure you can take that class before you graduate. Whether it be like journalism one or journal versus journalism two, because with the mouth of the river, our, our newspaper, if you want to be editor in chief, that takes planning really in your sophomore year to be to take journalism one year sophomore year journal journalism two year junior year then to potentially become editor-in-chief your senior year so again we will continue to have these conversations you be thinking about that as to what some of your long-term goals are and making sure you you get there so that's more like a big picture um, as far as the prerequisites, some of them are just <clears throat> specific to like a specific grade in order to get into a, you know, typically it's a more advanced class. You need a specific minimum grade requirement. So you want to be making sure that you're meeting the mark so that as you want to move on and progress through um, that you can take those classes that you really um, want to take. And the final additional uh, piece of information for today are SAT subject tests. This is different than the regular SAT that students take. This is our subject test, so they're based on a specific subject. There are some colleges that do require them. I would say it's not the majority of schools, but there are many. And so because it's subject specific, you would want to take that test after you took the actual course, like for example, chemistry. 
or physics. If you're going to take that subject test, you would want to take that test after you've completed the course because the content is going to be fresh in your mind. There are not any subject tests that you will take as a ninth grader, so that is nothing that you have to think about now. And for the most part, maybe not even your sophomore year. But again, for some of you who are, are real planners and are looking ahead, you might just want to have that be on your radar as you're looking at your four year plan to be like, oh yeah, I need to make sure that's on my radar that when I take physics, I want to make sure that it's on my radar to take um, the, let's say, the subject test for that for that class. So I feel like we've fed you with a whole lot of information, and so we want to try to keep it sort of, I would say, short and sweet as possible. Um, but please know, and again, I, we reiterate this so many times, like we are here with you for the next four years, um, and you'll also hear us say, when in doubt, reach out. So we don't, you might not have all the questions today, you might have lots of questions regardless when those questions crop up for you, um, you can certainly reach out to us. And as we referenced in our um, previous um, presentation, normally students would just walk into our, our, our offices and ask a question. We still have that open door policy now that we're remote. It's just you e either can uh, book an appointment or, um, or e email us and we will do our best to answer your question as best as we can. So thank you again for watching uh, this, this first sort of full installation of your of your ninth grade boot camp. There'll be more to come and we look forward to seeing you again. Bye bye.